Hi, this is Brian. I'm trying a Loom recording outdoors and on a Chromebook, so we'll see how this turns out. Uh, I just wanted to write an update about a chapter in the success principles uh, and show a few tools that I'm using to help this become more successful. So today I'm going to be reading chapter 7 in the book. It's shown here, just as a reminder. Chapter 7 is called Unleash the Power of Goal Setting. Introduces uh, with a quote by Andrew Carnegie, If you want to be happy, set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energy, and inspires your hopes. I'm not going to go over the whole chapter. What I'm going to do is show a tool that I'm using as an assist. So, first of all, I have notes on the screen that I've taken for this chapter. So, I'm going to put the title here it's called... Uh, Unleash the Power of Goal Setting. I'm going to take jot down some notes here. This is a tool called Notion that I use as my knowledge management. So all my notes go into this. I'll type notes as I read the book, key points, just the main headings, and then maybe thoughts about how it might apply to my life along the way. Things you would normally write in a journal, I'm just using Notion for. I have another tool I'm going to use that I also wanted to show. So this is really just a note-taking tool, but I, I'm going to paste from other sources into it. So some of the things will be images that I like. Notion accepts images, so you can get a, a multimedia journal with it, and you can use it for multiple devices. It synchronizes in the cloud. That's, that's its big advantage. Well, the other tool I want to do is about per, using perplexity, perplexity.ai talked about this in other videos, um, but if this is all you've watched so far, I'll just mention it. Go to perplexity.ai. It's a chat engine, very similar to chat GPT. I happen to find it much more complex, uh, easy to use, but gives you much more complex output. And so I use it with personal development. So as I come across a concept, I'll move over to the perplexity tab and ask it a question related to that chapter. So why don't we just, why don't we start with, um, give some ideas for effective goal setting. So I'll ask for things related to the chapter, starting with something broad like this. And now we can just see what it will come up with. And see, it goes to multiple sources talks about smart goals, that which is one of the things in the chapter, and it gives some guidance about how to break those down into manageable goals, tracking your progress. Then it goes into more detail, smart framework about specific and measurable goals, um, very much what the chapter is about. So now I've got another tool to read a, an additional perspective on, on the same topic. If you like what you have here, they make it very easy to paste. So you can just go to this clipboard, go back to the, I go back to the Notion tablet, do control V to paste that in. And now all of a sudden I've got all of that output in my note tool, which you can edit. It even gives references. So you also have other links you could click to go learn more. I'll do a, a three hyphen thing to make a, makes a horizontal line to divide up your section so you can keep it all on one notion page but you have little dividers okay we'll go back to perplexity over here and now i can ask a follow-up prompt and for this i'll go back to the book the book says the two most important parts of a goal are quantifying it and then being a t specific time so those are two parts of the smart goal so it's a simpler thing if you're journaling and just doing idea generation, that makes sense. Smart goals, I mean, I've used those in companies like for, you know, annual goal setting um, and with teams like that where we're making team-based goals. So they need to be a little more detailed. For your journaling, the simplest way is just say how much you, you want to achieve and then when is the deadline for that book also dis distinguishes what's the difference between a goal and a good idea. Let's just to look at the, the capabilities of perplexity. Let's, let's investigate that. Let's just say if can perplexity tell us that. So what is the difference 
between a good idea and a goal? That's a very broad question. I really don't know how it will answer it. So let's see. Um, now I'm interested, but people have written about it, so it's probably going to pick that up from internet sources, uh, just like the book. Yeah, it, 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 you know, they're right on here. Here's their answer. A good idea is an abstract concept that may inspire action, but lacks structure or a clear path. That's basically what the book says, too. A goal is specific and actional and time-bound and measurable. Well, that's exactly what the book was talking about. So as you can see here, I'm using an AI tool called perplexity.ai to investigate these topics that I'm picking up in the book. In a way, I'm, I'm going deeper than the book. I'm using the book as a guide, kind of like as a mentor to give suggestions for things to look at. But now I'm going to perplexity to get even more detail than the book had. And I'm going to save it. So that's another thing that you can put in folders. And so I have one called um, probably Philosophy and Ethics. I, I should need, rename the folders. I should make one for personal development, but it's the same. I'm throwing them all in this folder. What that means is this will always be here, although I'm pasting parts of it into Notion, the parts I want to keep and work on all of these outputs will be saved in that folder. I can always go back to it. Well, so then you get to a point where you don't need your book anymore. What you have is actually more thorough anyway than the book you read. So you're really using the book just for idea generation. But but perplexity can even get, tell me the book. Well, let's just list the chapters because that could give a framework. To, if you're putting a system in, you just this would give me a list of the chapters to use as you know headers, for example, without having to type it all. And here's a list of the chapters. So chapter seven, unleash the power of goal setting. It's right there. So I could I could take this and paste it into Notion, and then I could elaborate each of these. I could make a summary paragraph. I could have a few lines for journaling. Um, why don't I do that, actually? So I'm going to, there, I'm, I just hit copy. I'm going to go over to this tab. Now I'm control V to paste it. And now I've got a list of chapters in my Notion page. So all I got to do, I, I can just go into one of these and start edit, edit out the number. Oh, it renumbered it. So we got to be a little careful. There's a way to use it. Uh, without typing. So this gives you like an outline and a framework, um, which makes that next step easier. You know, I found if, if you're embarking in a personal development journey, anything you can do to, to kind of get you one step ahead in the process, starting is the hard part in my experience. So just having these chapter names, putting it into a, a tool that you can journal into, those first few steps make the next steps easier because it gives you a place to start putting things. Getting started is often the hardest part. Um, so what I'm showing here today is just a few tools to, to make it a little bit easier just to get started. Uh, but I also really like this idea of using a tool like Perplexity. Let's, let's ask it for a template for SMART goals. Because this is going to go over to my notes because this is something you could paste into each day's journal if, for example if you're doing daily journaling you might have one goal for each day i'm just making that up and then you could have a goal for the week all based on prior private prior ex exercises covered things like values and your mission statement you know in between we skip skip this part on the videos but you should be breaking those down into like daily tasks, weekly tasks, monthly tasks to help accomplish your, your, your goals. And journaling is a part of um, that whole process of creating positive imagery, reviewing your successes, learning from the failures, and reviewing your progress towards that goal. Because you, are, you would be setting these goals. It has a deadline, and it's a quantitative goal. That means you can measure it so you know whether you achieved it or not. Um, so at the end, it, it will be obvious if you achieved it, but along the way, you need to have markers for your progress to make sure you're on course, or maybe you need to be changing something. Uh, many of you have done this in work. If you've ever had to set goals, if, if you're a knowledge worker, uh, 
if you're a manager, you've probably had to help create these types of goals and review goals of your own direct reports. And then and you would certainly have had company goals that you were responsible for following and contributing to. So this is just talking about, talking about applying the same thing in people's personal life, which in my experience, most people don't do. Most people don't approach life with intention. Um, if you ask a random person to name 10 goals that they have, like on the sidewalk in the street, you know how they do with late night interviews. Sometimes they just go and ask people kind of off the wall questions. I don't think you could get an answer for most people for 10 goals. I'm not sure I have 10 goals. That's why I'm doing the process. Then you could say, well, then tell me three of your goals. I, there's probably people that actually could on the spot, couldn't name three goals. They probably have them once they go think about it, but it's not the, at the beginning of their mind, top of mind. Well, that's what this exercise is about, keeping goals on the top of your mind. Like, how can you expect to be successful if you aren't always thinking about these things? Um, and because these are important things, I'm not talking about small things. These are things you identify as the most important things for you to accomplish in your life. Like, I'm not talking about small goals. Like, what are you going <laughs> to, what movie are you going to watch on Netflix this weekend? Like, I'm not talking about that. These are like the big things. Like, things that you thought you sh should accomplish to have a satisfying life. So like, what's more important than that? So you need to be thinking about those things all the time. It, uh, that's the first step toward making it come true. And then we get into law of attraction and manifesting, which I'm not as big a fan of all of that, but, but there's something to it. There's something about keeping positive thoughts in your mind, reviewing them frequently, and, and then when opportunities happen, then, then you're ready for them because your mind is already has a place for it. It's waiting. Your mind's in fact, waiting to see it and ready for it. It's, it's like being prepared for success. Uh, cause sometimes random things happen, but you have to know what you want or else it'll pass. That'll pass you by just like everything else. So that's a little bit of philosophy, but I was trying to, show how to use perplexity, but I didn't finish. So let's provide a template for smart goals for personal development, starting with annual goals and examples, followed by weekly goals. I'm just trying to give it to give, I'm using this as a thought prompt. So First of all, it would give me a template I can use in my journal, but now I want to see some example goals using the SMART technique that it talked about earlier. And it's thinking about it. It's showing me where it's getting its information and what types of questions. It's asking additional questions before it gives me an answer. Okay, so here's a template for annual SMART goals. You see all the elements there. That I can paste these lines over into Notion. I won't paste the whole thing. Public speaking skills. Like if you didn't have an idea for a goal, well, here's one right here. Or, or change this one a little bit. You, so you can use perplexity to give you ideas when you feel stuck. It's great for riders for the same reason. Get, get fitter. Running a 5K in 30 minutes. That one's not going to be for me, but, but I know that I need to exercise, so I can just change some of these things to to make it personal for me to fit my goals. Those are annual goals, things you're gonna to have to work on over a whole year, like five speeches in a year, for example. That was for the first goal, that's what they specified. That's really clear. Like if you haven't done five in a year, then you didn't meet that goal. So you gotta pick re realistic goals, but you wanna stretch a little bit. You don't, want, you don't want it to be an automatic thing. You wanna to have to work for it. Okay, so now here are the weekly SMART goals. And it took the same two things, and now it's going to give weekly goals. So, so five public speeches in a year, but and for a week, it's the goal is I'm going to practice for 30 minutes three times that week. Because most weeks you're not going to have a public speech, like that was the annual goal. But on a get average week, you should be working on it. And so they're actually giving you a suggestion. Public speaking, practice 30 minutes three times a week. Actually, that's what I'm doing now by recording this video. Uh, if, if this were one of my goals, I would count this as 
as that weekly goal <laughs> because um, I do feel like I'm practicing public speaking by doing this. It, it's part of why I'm doing it. Okay. These are just ideas. You, you could ask off the wall things. Let's say uh, suggest 30 goals for the year for, let's see, uh, a professional. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm a cancer researcher, so I'll just do my job for a press professional cancer researcher. They don't know anything about me, but let's just suggest 30 goals. Because if you, this is back to earlier exercises where you're supposed to think of 30 things or 10 things. Obviously, you, know, you can get stuck at once you write a few of them down. Again, most people don't have goals. Well, you do have things that you want, and you just need to see examples. And then you turn those into the goals. So I asked for 30 annual goals for professional cancer researcher. And to me, it gave them all in the smart format because that's what we've been talking about in this thread. Publish three peer-reviewed papers. That's kind of hard in one year, actually. That, that's definitely a stretch goal <laughs> unless you've got all the data ready. Uh, secure one major grant. That's kind of hard. Uh, I said maybe apply for one grant, but this, they don't all get funded. So um, these are kind of hard. I might go back and ask it to make some easier ones. Let's see if it can do that, actually. Let's just ask. Suggest... 30 somewhat easier goals. <laughs> AI doesn't take it personally. It's happy to help. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now it says submit one research article to a peer-reviewed journal by the end of the year. Now that you can do. That's still a lot of work, but you can definitely do that one. And then review three papers in journals in my field review three papers well you could do that in each issue of a journal so I mean, that you can accomplish collaborate on a project attend one workshop update some sops write a grant proposal see that became more the other one said get the award for the grant now they're just saying apply for one which is still a lot of work create a research plan built with milestone you know there, there's a lot of creative thinking that went into this. I, I gave such a simple question and look at what they were able to come back with. So, so you could do this for your field or for just personal goals. Um, we could do another one, suggest 30 goals for an abstract landscape artist. For the next year so you can use this for hobbies too if you're just completely stuck maybe i mean the best goals will be the ones you already think of these, these are some tools like when you run out of those ideas and you and you know you haven't thought of everything you can use these tools to suggest some more so create 12 new abstract paintings one per month well that's achievable i mean abstract sometimes you can do those in a day but but you don't want to create one every day. You need to feel inspired. So one a month, that, that's a great goal. You know, say one good finished one. You may have to try some others. They don't all turn out. So experiment with three new techniques, impasto, glazing, pouring. Those give you all kinds of new ideas. That one line right there, if you haven't tried those things, I can tell you as a painter, like, you can have some really different works by, by trying them and, and developing skills with them. So these are great suggestions. Create a large scale piece, four by six feet. You know, as a hobby painter, I can tell you that that's big and really big. And it's out of the comfort zone for most artists. So they knew to suggest that. I don't know where it got the suggestion. It found it in some source, but uh, I like that idea. That That's a great way to break out of a, if you're in a rut and you want to try something different now they like to even talk about marketing your art so you may be you may be thinking like a hobbyist but they're giving some ideas selling them on etsy i've done that before that's a great idea um, it didn't mention fine art america which i would recommend as a better platform than than etsy but you know the, i bet i could have asked about it and it probably would have known read three books on 
art technique. So what they're saying is don't stagnate, be reading. Um, I would add if you're reading it, also have perplexity open so you can ask some questions while you're reading. I found that to be a, a huge boost to my reading comprehension. Just that way you, you get the author's ideas from the book you're reading. But along with that, you, you get other other ideas. And that's all I'm trying to show is how you incorporate an AI tool into your, well, personal growth, but also you, we've come up with career ideas and hobby ideas as well. Um, it, it, use it to help you brainstorm and just ask it. Just ask it for a number of ideas. Ask it for a big number because it, it's not extra work for it. it. It wants to help you. So don't just ask for 10 ideas. Ask for 30. Ask for 50. And then pick the ones you like uh, for, for effective brainstorming. So that's all I needed to say on this one. And when I come up with another useful chapter with some tools, I'll, I'll share that too. Thanks for watching.